everybody and welcome back to The Funniest Tweets. Today we are talking about and reacting to the Hungarian Grand Prix. Full of memes, full of laughter, which the race certainly wasn't. It was a non-thriller, uh, to put it lightly, after being baited by qualifying. Hamilton on pole, two McLarens on the second row, Zhou Guan Yu P5, you're thinking, what's going to happen here? Spoiler alert. Nothing. Not really anything. Not much. But we've still got lots of memes to talk about, so let's do it. Joe Bowling. We had to start at the very beginning, which was lap one, turn one, where Joe Guan Yu, you know, he's, he's bedding himself into Formula One. He's got his teammate Valtteri Bottas alongside him. And he decided to take a bit of Valtteri Bottas advice a little bit too literally. Going bowling. At Jan underscore Krabasic. Lap one summarised. So Zhou Guan Yu, the greatest qualifying of his life, sticks at P5, was the goat on hards, mediums and softs. Then doesn't get off the line at all. Literally looked like he just didn't go when the lights went off, but I'm sure there was a little bit more difficulties than that. And then just missed his breaking point. Lightly touches Daniel Ricciardo, who sends both Alpines into each other Zhou Guan Yu certainly turned what was an incredible qualifying and an amazing looking like race weekend into one he definitely wants to forget. At CMHP Leclerc, <laughs> Zhou is the absolute menace to Alpine in turn one. I mean, what is it with Hungary? Turn one, it's becoming a bowling alley. Bottas last year, I think, wiped out to a degree both Red Bulls. Obviously, Max carried on with a lot of damage. And this year, both Alpines getting taken out. What's next year? At MikoAdJ5860473. Ray start in a nutshell. Gasly has to ban Ricardo show. Yeah, when I saw the replay on board Danny Rick, great to see him back, by the way. Outqualified Sonoda by a whopping 13 thousandths in Q1 and then managed to beat him in the race somehow, which uh, I know Yuki did have a slow stop. But I did think Danny Rick, he braked rather late. If you look at his onboard, he was a few millimetres away from giving... Uh, one of the Alpines a nudge anyway and then got a helping hand from Joe behind but he managed to pick himself up quite nicely didn't he Danny after plummeting to 18th Ferrari please that's a good stop 2.3 Charlie boy <laughs> Charlie 9.4 oh uh, dear At least he's on the mediums, at least, because the McLarens are good. <laughs> Can you stop laughing? Why is this real? You literally <laughs> don't even hold back anymore. It's because like, you it's, your, be able to it's your reactions are so funny. You used funny. to be able to suppress, and then you start <laughs> bursting out with laughter. Just because I know. Okay, we're now going to get into the Ferrari segment, which I'm sure some of you are tuning in for. A lot of you popped into our Twitch stream, didn't you? And and popped in just to see what I would say when Charles Leclerc had his problems throughout the race. And uh, it's weird. It's a weird one because right now I would say it's, it's more numbness at this point. You know, things going wrong, penalties being accrued. It feels normal in a way, which is something I shouldn't be saying as a fan of a Formula One team. At Star, Star Clerc, I really thought it couldn't get worse than, than then it did. Man who thought he'd lost all hope. It was his last little bit of hope. Yeah. One thing I found interesting was the team radio between Leclerc and Xavi, where I don't know if it's happened before, but this was the one time where I genuinely felt like there was not animosity. It wasn't that bad, but it was there was really quite obvious frustration with what was going on because the whole strategy and they said they'd come back to Leclerc at the end. And then Charles like, what do you mean at the end? You know, I'm in a race. Like, what's going on? It's always we are checking. It's you don't really hear that from any other team. You, you don't have a driver pick up the phone, obviously not literally, and go, so what are we doing next? Blah, 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 blah. You don't ever hear them go, we'll get back to you in a few laps, maybe 10 laps. Maybe at the end of the race, we'll get back to you. There's something not right with the whole process of communication within that team. At over underscore view effect, Carlos Sainz calling all his own strategies at Ferrari. Again, this was this was a little bit weird, wasn't it? Again, communication. Carlos deciding his own strategy by saying he's going to hold up Hamilton until he gets past or whatever. And, and then they said, good call. Ferrari said, good call. Which, I mean, it was a good call. <laughs> 
But it, is that the way it should be? Is that the way round teams should be going? I know sometimes Hamilton, Verstappen's, you know, the, 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 the most successful drivers sometimes take things into their own hands and go, no, I'm not pitting, I'm going to carry on, blah, 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 blah. But it's, it, I, I just find it a little bit odd. At June Steps, man, I really miss when the Ferrari engines went boom because at least they were challenging for race wins and were on the podium regularly. It's weird, isn't it? How now, like sixth and seventh, seventh and eighth, I think it was today, how is that becoming the norm? The problem is you've got McLaren picking their game up. You had Alfa Romeo, obviously, in qualifying, doing very well. You have Mercedes, you have Red Bull. Like, you have Aston Martin. There's so many teams that are picking up their game that Ferrari... Need to, need to stop the bleeding. What's going on? We've gone from literally last year, challenging for wins, me being so deluded in thinking that potentially Ferrari are going to be world champions, to now not even getting a sniff of the podium. We have fallen so hard. After just one year of hope, we've fallen already. At Amigosi Blixer. FIA rejecting Ferrari's appeal to deduct Leclerc's five-second penalty from the 9.4-second pit stop. I haven't even spoken about that. So, of course, he got the speeding in the pit lane. He also had that problem on the team radio and also had a 9.4-second pit stop. And that's when an influx of people especially came into the Twitch stream uh, to say hello and see how I'm doing. But it is weird because it is almost like I'm getting used to the fact that blunders happen. Tommy burst out laughing. When, when those penalties came up, because he knew. He knew how that would make me feel. Does that make him a good friend? Probably not. But I know that a lot of you tune in as well to see my pain and my anguish. But yeah, it's... Ferrari are not actively working at a championship level. They are not a Mercedes, a Red Bull, a McLaren. Even in the pit stops, it just... Everywhere's not going well! How do we fix it? At Schumacher Man, Leclerc speeding in the pit lane. A very popular meme now, popular Twitch emote. It doesn't hurt as much when we're nowhere near the front. I won't lie to you. I'm not going to be throwing my headphones, losing P6. I'm just not. If it was for the win, those headphones are getting yeeted. Max domination. So, of course, with Max Verstappen dominating and he needs absolutely the credit here that he is unstoppable, the car, the driver, put them together, absolutely incredible. Like Max Verstappen is showing that it is not the easiest car in the world to just win races in. Perez is, is absolute evidence of that. But yeah, he, he's just driving off the biggest winning margin we've seen all season, which I joked about going into today, going, oh, I bet after all this, Max wins by the biggest margin ever. And he actually did. When my expectations were through the sky. And we came plummeting back down to earth, didn't we? At Ahmed underscore Bayokba. F1 qualifying in 23. F1 racing in 23. Quali is unbelievable this year. Over one lap, Red Bull don't have a massive advantage. But take it to the race, and they are just unbelievable on their tyres. They're um, just they're, the consistency, Max Verstappen behind the wheel. It's just, it is unbeatable. Next, que next question. I, was, I thought I was on the podcast for a second. At Minoru79 with the next meme. Race expectations after qualifying versus reality. How many of you, be honest, come on, get in the comments right now. How many of you felt a little bit deflated today after having Hamilton on pole after 30, 33 races, was it? Which is Max Verstappen's old number. Oh my God, can't believe he's going to win. Didn't win, did he? Max got his 44th win. 44 wins at 25 years old, I think he is. I think he's 25. Ridiculous. If he carries on for another 10 years, which I don't think he will, every record's going to get broken if he's in a good car. But yes, deflation. Is that how we felt? At Ajin Kiad, Max waiting for other drivers to finish the race behind him. Quite literally, 33 seconds ahead of Lando Norris. Probably wasn't pushing that hard anyway. He said he absolutely loved that final stint. He was enjoying himself. Him, Red Bull fans, probably no one else actually enjoying that last stint. Especially McLaren fans, if you look at the Red Bull's last stint overall. Lando coming under a lot of pressure. Obviously, Piastri getting passed by both Piastri and Hamilton. Uh, by Piastri, by Perez and Hamilton. My brain's a little bit frazzled today. Can you tell? But, yeah. Well, it was, a, it was a tough race to really stay engaged with. 
at and eight Hamilton's on pole <laughs> turn two. It's quite, it was quite literally that. Every, we were gassing it up, weren't we? Oh, Verstappen's used an extra set of mediums for a bit, of, you know, running qualifying because his lap was deleted. Hamilton's on the clean side of the grid. Lando also with his fresh mediums, surely. None of that happened. Max got an unbelievable start up the inside. Squeezed Hamilton wide. God, he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? And then that allowed Piastri into P2, and that's when we knew it was over. No disrespect to Oscar Piastri. My God, he 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 goes for stuff. He goes for overtakes on that first lap. Silverstone, he was all over the back of Max. Also in Hungary, but I feel like that might be the reason why his tyres fall off a cliff as well. At Ticey 46, Max living in his own world. Yeah, it really was that Max just chilling out front. Oh, it's a hot day, whatever, who cares? Everyone behind, tyre conservation, panic, drivers around them. Although, again, I say drivers around them. Everyone was in conservation mode. There wasn't much overtaking, was there? The midfield usually clutch up for us. When we have a Max Verstappen domination, which is almost every single race weekend, since whatever, Baku, the midfield usually clutch up, but they didn't really this weekend. Maybe I jinxed it because I said, oh my God, are we going to get a close race weekend? We didn't. Lando destroys trophy. Yep, that's right. Lando Norris decided to give us the most entertainment of the entire weekend of breaking the P1 trophy. On the, on the podium, does his usual champagne smash. The, the Max's trophy is literally on the edge. He smashes the podium. Obviously, it's going to move. It topples over. The top smashes off. The base smashes off as well. Unbelievable. Chris Knight underscore 23. Lando seeing Max's trophy slowly tip over after popping his champagne. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. I'd, I'd love to know what happens now. Does he get... Does he get spoken to? Does he get fined? Is there any kind of... Imagine if like, he got penalised 20 seconds in the race for breaking a trophy. I don't know. You never know with the FIA, but I do wonder what they'll say. At Hannah Lilibet, Lando, when people see the state of Max's trophy, it was pretty broken. Watch the clips back. Some people have done great little zooms in. You can literally see it snap off. No, I, I don't remember that. I mean, I, I say I don't remember the last time it happened. I'm pretty sure Lando did the exact same thing in Silverstone, but the trophy was made of more solid stuff. I can't remember the last time that trophy was actually broken during the whole champagne procedure. So well done, Lando. You got a new record there as well. At Ben underscore Bates, Lando to max his trophy because he won't let him win again. Well, look, that's one way to, you know, Max technically didn't get P1. If anything, he should now score zero points because he's not got a trophy to be able to prove that he won the Hungarian Grand Prix. Did anyone see him? Did anyone see him during the race? No, not me. God, we're struggling, aren't we? Right, hello then, Tommy. It's Tommy's Tasty Tweet Time. Sponsored by EA and F123. Who is winning a lucky, wonderful copy of the game this week? That person is... Hooks... <laughs> Or Hugo, as their name is. I can't read out their, their at. But um, it's this one for our now trademark. He can't win every race. And to be honest, even as a Verstappen fan, that is how I feel after watching that race. It was um, quite something. I feel like even I've aged. It's a good edit as well. I, I do like the way that they've kind of tried to incorporate our background somewhat. At least my one, uh, you can sort <laughs> of notice. But... Uh... Hopefully that's not what we'll be saying in 40 years. Um, although I do quite like the, the old person set up with the mics in front of them like we've got. I like it. They've done a good job there. Amazing. Well, well done uh, to whatever that pronunciation was. Hugo, you win a copy of F123. I'll slide in your DMs and send it over to you. And Tommy, thank you so much as always, sir. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Look, we got merch. Merch. Link in the description. Merch. Right, that is it. Thank you so much for watching the funniest tweets of the Hungarian Grand Prix. It was uh, not the best race in the world, but we're back again race week next week for the Belgian Grand Prix. Spa has to deliver. It's not delivered in a while. We need a banger there. 
Are we going to get it? Are McLaren going to be a bit better? You'd like to think so, but are Red Bull going to be a million miles ahead? Who knows? Probably. Why am I saying who knows? We know what the outcome's going to be, but you'll still tune in, won't you? Absolutely. Thank you so much to EA for uh, sponsoring Tommy's Tasty Tweet segment, and thank you to all of you for watching, as always. And we'll see you very soon for the podcast and all the other bits of content you know is coming. Lots of love. See you soon.